So in this video series on building your own laser, I've looked at how to design a laser, build a frame initially so that we have a place to put our laser. Then we looked at uh, building a drivetrain so we can move the laser head around. We put some optic mounts in and uh, then we wired everything together. We created a front panel and, and hooked everything up to power supplies and we're basically ready to go. But there's a few key things missing and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So how's it going everybody? Steve here. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a couple of really key systems that your laser absolutely needs and we haven't really talked about them a whole lot here in this series. So in this video, which should actually be pretty short, I want to look at things like the uh, water cooling system, the ventilation system so we can get fumes out of the laser cabinet and uh, the air system so that we can push any flame and, and debris away from the laser, uh, the laser uh, cut point as, as the laser is moving. So in this video that's what we'll cover and like I said it should be a fairly short video but let's get going. All right we're going to start with the simplest system which is the air system and you can see I showed you in the previous video this red hose coming out of the air compressor down in the bottom and what it does is it actually runs in this, there's a, a chain here, a drag chain and you can see it come out here, it actually runs along the top there and the air hose runs through that so that we can, it's, it's flexible so that we can bring it down here and then it runs into this chain as well and loops around and comes out here. Now we have a little bit of air adjustment here so I, could, I can adjust the amount of air coming out and then it runs down into the, into the laser nozzle there. It's, it's a pretty simple system. I, companies like Cloudray offer things like the ultimate air system where the air turns on when you're laser cutting, but I didn't bother. I thought that was a little extreme. So for me, I just turn the air on right there and uh, when I need it, and that's all there is to it. So the next system to look at is the water system. And I showed you in the previous video, the water uh, coming out of the cooler. Uh, this is the output line of the cooler and it runs up the side here and over to the the back end of the laser tube because this is the anode end. So this is where, I guess the, the, we'll, we'll say this is where the fire starts. So from here, the, the water runs through the tube and you can see if I can get down here, there's a coil that, that cools down the, the hottest part of the tube. And then it runs down to the other end, to the cathode end of the tube. And you can see there's an output here and it runs back down to the input to the input side of the cooler. So that it's really that simple. Now, as far as the coolant in the summertime, I tend to just use water, but in the winter time, I will mix this water with uh, propylene glycol just so that it doesn't freeze. My shop is normally normally heated, but if we had a power failure or something and the heat couldn't come on then I would want to make sure that it doesn't freeze in case I don't get out here quick enough to uh, deal with it. Okay, so we're about to look at the ventilation system. And before we do that, I thought I'd show you a bit of how the design is assembled in Fusion 360. And you can see on the diagram here, there's actually two major components, the green component, and I apologize if you're colorblind, but the top piece here is, is green. Uh, the green component is the, is the main intake system. So, this has a, a, a slot right across the front of it, and this is about 750 millimeters wide. It sits right behind the workspace in, inside the laser and right at workspace height. There's also, uh, which I haven't shown in the assembly here, on this front as face of the, of, the, of the stack, there's also uh, some holes uh, cut into the, into the front of this, and that's into the front face. And that's so that any, any fumes that get below the, works, the workspace uh, through the mesh uh, can still get sucked out. They don't have to come up again through the workspace to get, uh, to get out the top here. So, so that's the top stack. And if I turn off the bottom piece here, sorry, wrong one. If I turn off the bottom piece here and we look in, you can see this is literally just a big empty box. And its sole purpose is to 
is to suck air in from the from the cabinet, basically smoke, and pull it down down to the bottom of this stack. And when it when it gets there, it runs into this second component, which is the fan assembly for inside the cabinet. And this is this assembly I showed you in a previous video. The bottom piece of this, there's actually a six inch hole in the bottom, and and there's a flange that. Uh, that contains a six inch pipe uh, that's that's here on, on this diagram and on the top uh, the top piece of this sits uh, inside the floor of the laser and it has 320 millimeter fans that are drawing down so they're basically sucking air out of the inside of the cabinet and forcing it down into that six inch pipe so this is the the ventilation assembly it's it is pretty simple. Uh, the reason I showed it to you is because it, it is kind of built separately uh, from the rest of the laser and you slide it in there after and uh, and uh, so you don't normally see it on any of the assembly diagrams uh, in, in Fusion 360 so I thought I'd call it out here separately. Anyway let's get looking at the real thing. So now we get to the final system, and this one is ironically the most complex. It's the it's the ventilation system. So I showed you in the last video I can change the speed of the main exhaust fan, but where it actually sucks uh, pollutants out of the laser is this box at the back, and I'll, I'll go around the back and I'll show you what where this actually goes. I showed you uh, the Fusion 360 diagram of this, the assembly. So. This is it in, inside the laser. It basically sucks air from inside the cabinet and there's a couple of ways it can get air uh, in so we don't create a vacuum. So on the front cover of the laser, I, I have some slots cut here and then in the back, right behind the inside of the, of the front panel, there's another piece of acrylic with a slot that's above and that's only there so that you can't peer directly into the laser so it's just a little offset and that runs down both sides. And also there's a, a bit of extra input down here just in case I can't suck enough air in just so that we don't get a vacuum. You want it to be a little bit negative but you don't want you don't want a vacuum otherwise nothing moves. So that's the air system from inside the cabinet. Now let me walk around the back and I'll show you what it looks like in behind. Okay, so here's here's the back end of the of that input. So it's up here. So the slot in that is on the other side, and you can see there's a stack here, and it runs down to the to the top of the of the cabinet underneath. And what's inside here, and I talked a bit about it in the last video, but what's inside here is three 120 millimeter fans sucking down and that's to make sure we get good positive pressure here. Also below the main slot up here on the front side of this stack I, I have a couple of holes cut just to make sure that any smoke that's down below the table can also get dealt with so it doesn't actually have to come up above the table to get exhausted. So uh, not a lot just enough to make sure there's a bit of negative pressure under the table as well. So that's the air system. It's actually not too complicated. You can see here's the 12 volt line running into those three fans. And I showed you the main exhaust fan uh, in the last video, but here's where it comes out at the back of the laser. And it's a big six inch tube and it runs down and exhausts outside. So that's the entire exhaust system. So there we have it. Those are the last three big subsystems in the laser and we can more or less call the laser built. Now we still haven't talked about a few things. So most importantly, and we'll do that in the next video is alignment. We need to get our laser aligned so that, that it has optimal cutting and engraving capability. And uh, after that, we'll do uh, one final cleanup video to uh, walk through some of the details of, of just things that haven't been covered yet. So with that, we'll call it a video, and, and as always, I'll put a video up above here to get you back into the uh, previous videos in this series, and uh, go watch those if you're interested, and I'll see you over there. Otherwise, get out there and make your world, and I'll see you next time.